Haha, <laughs> 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 that looks really cute. Oh, I love it! Welcome to the Photography Podcast with your host, Mike Cassidy. Hey, how are you, everybody? My name is Mike Cassidy, and I'm a boudoir photographer from New Jersey, and this is my show. What I do is talk with people who are just starting out on their photography voyages, as well as established pros to learn about the hurdles they've had to overcome to get their businesses going. I'm looking to bring you personal stories, which will help you connect to the fact that you're not alone in your struggles. Along the way, we'll probably have a few laughs, but the goal is to get you some actionable advice to help your business grow. So stay tuned. You never know what you may learn. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. My name is Michael, and I'm your neighbor. How are you tonight? Thanks for coming back. So what have I been up to? Well, I've been working on a few couple sessions. Uh, one of this groups had a lot of pictures that they picked out that they wanted in an album. So it's a lot of work. So I've been uh, working on that. And then the woman who was involved in the session she called me earlier this week and she's like, oh, we want to come back again next month and do it again. We had so much fun, which is a good thing. Um, so that was a good surprise this week. You always want people coming back. It's, you know, it's quick. Two months later, it's, it's fast for them to want to come back. But hey, I'm all right with that. And also, I've been working on some sample sessions. I managed to do some sample photos back around Christmas. I think one in early January. And um, no, that's not the priority. Uh, but I like to have them to use for social media or my galleries online to freshen my photos every once in a while and I use these sample sessions to to work on some new ideas or sometimes people bring me in sample photos they, they found online and the, the poses turn out really good and you know, so I'm do my own version of these shots and some practice and uh, I like doing that I have another one I think scheduled in early early March so I like to keep uh, my work fresh so I'm working on some of those things and finally feeling a bit better at this mystery virus for weeks and weeks and weeks i've been sick not feeling well super exhausted all the time and finally feeling back a little bit better and i went back and actually took two jujitsu classes in the past two days and got my ass kicked which is good you know i like going but when you're sick it takes a while to get back in shape and and uh get back in the swing of things there my view there is, you know, I think people have a bit too much comfort in their lives, and jujitsu is a good because it's good stress. And getting choked for an hour straight makes the rest of your day seem pretty okay. That's at least how I, I see it. And as for tonight, I was just relaxing. I'm uh, working on some new episodes. I have some new interviews recorded for the future, and I'm working on those. And also wanted to do a new thing, like a mini podcast. I'll call it a mini, kind of like a boudoir mini. So that's what I'm going to call them. Makes sense, right? Figured I'd talk for a short time on a particular topic, or I can answer a question that someone has sent in and do it in a, in a shorter episode. So tonight I recorded that first mini. It's, it's about outdoor boudoir. And I hate that term. So spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, outdoor boudoir does not exist. It is not a thing. So if you have a few minutes, you can give this a listen. And then I'll be back early next month with some new interviews for you. And enjoy this and talk to you soon. Thanks. Today on this first podcast mini, I wanted to talk a bit about outdoor boudoir, or maybe more accurately, I should say that there's no such thing as outdoor boudoir. Well, what is outdoor boudoir? Well, let me start by saying there's a bit of an issue here, and I'll explain. You hear about this outdoor boudoir, you'll see it mentioned online from time to time on the interwebs. You'll see photographers posting on social media about outdoor boudoir events. 
You may come across a blog post by a photographer, Mrs. R's Outdoor Boudoir Session, and there's lots of shots of grassy meadows and forests. And some photographers even have dedicated web pages on their websites to such an offering. It seems like a thing, no? If you dig a bit further, you'll even see that there are some larger photography blogs that have articles about outdoor boudoir. You know, so what gives here? Just seems like a natural thing. These posts, you know, they always contain a lot about text about warm summer breezes and the purity of these golden fields, which are the perfect location to host these outdoor boudoir sessions. It's all very appealing, except for one small detail. Technically, there's no such thing as outdoor boudoir. But wait, Mike, you just said it. I saw it online. It does exist. The photographer even showed a woman in a lace bodysuit laying half submerged in a pond. Okay. Yeah. There was even another photo of a woman in broad undies lying in the grass. She was in the grass. That's outdoor boudoir. Well, no, it's not outdoor boudoir. And the first thing that kind of popped into my mind at this point is the old phrase from Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You'll just have to allow me to explain. I guess the simplest way to start is with the definition of boudoir photography. Boudoir photography is an extremely simple and yet often understood, misunderstood genre of photography. There are a few basic tenets that describe boudoir photography, and these are, where do we shoot boudoir? We can start with that first word, boudoir. Boudoir is, de is defined as a woman's bedroom or a private room. It's an intimate setting. It's aware. Boudoir photography is photography that captures a woman in her boudoir. Okay, so now we know where boudoir takes place. How about a little bit about the why? Why do we shoot boudoir? Well, boudoir is about capturing a woman in this intimate setting. It certainly has some voyeuristic overtones. It's a look in on a woman's private quarters. It's her caught in private moments, perhaps not even meant to be seen. This is what creates a sense of allure. Is she smiling? Is she looking in the camera? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, and now there's also another part of it, the how. How is boudoir captured? Well, the paragraphs above describe the where and the why. And we can put those things together to form the how. As boudoir itself is a simple and pure form of photography, so is the how. Boudoir is captured in a simply lit style, which is beautiful, organic, and flowing. Remember that if you're a boudoir photographer. Beautiful, organic, and flowing. It tells a story and it makes you want to know more. It creates allure. Those are the three parameters the where, the why, and the how of boudoir photography. It's very simple. Can there be exceptions to those rules? Of course. You know, boudoir is an art form and there can be many interpretations of boudoir, but those are the ground rules. So let's take what we just learned and we're gonna go back and look at our example that we had before. Outdoor boudoir. Let's start where the where. Is a grassy meadow a woman's bedroom or boudoir? No, no it isn't. Let's take a look at the why. Is a grassy meadow an intimate saying? Are we looking in on a woman's private quarters? Not really. A grassy meadow may even be a wide open public space. There could be lots of people around. Now how about this how? Is the session captured in a beautiful and simple manner? Possibly. Outdoor photography may be photographed using natural light or a simple lighting setup that's not really interfering with the tone and mood of the session. It's possible. You know, so by that definition of boudoir photography, this scenario that we just talked about may only pass on one of those criteria. There's more to it, though. The other big mistake that people often associate the term boudoir photography with any kind of photograph of a woman in underwear 
this simply is not the case. An outdoor photo of a woman lying on a pile of rocks in a bra isn't boudoir. Lingerie isn't the defining characteristic of what makes boudoir photography. It may be an element of boudoir, but it's not the sole defining characteristic. Look at it this way. Taking a photo of a woman in a bathing suit standing in my backyard doesn't make it a beach photo. A bikini may be a wardrobe element of a beach photo, but the bikini itself isn't the sole defining factor of a beach photo. If I snapped a photo of a woman in a subway car meaning a, wearing a bikini, that certainly isn't a beach photo. Get the idea here? There are a few things that need to come together to define a beach photo, such as the location and other factors. In addition to this, the primary tone of boudoir photography is beauty rather than an overt sexuality. It's a fine distinction, but it's there. The untrained eye or people maybe looking at a photo who doesn't know that much about photography may not be able to spot the difference, but as a boudoir photographer who studies this kind of thing, you should know the difference. So what is boudoir? What is outdoor boudoir then if it's not boudoir? Well, now we're getting to the heart of the issue here. If there is a woman in a lace bodysuit lying half soaked in a cold mine or in a cold pond, this is simply a glamour or beauty photo situation. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Calling this boudoir photography, well, doing that really isn't technically correct. It just perpetuates this bit of untruth about really what boudoir is or isn't. Now, as a photographer, I understand on the client side, all they really need to know from, or all they do know from retail photography or retail photography perspective is that they've heard about boudoir. They know it involves women taking photos and well, like mostly lingerie. Um, boudoir photography has grown enough so that people have an idea of what it is, which is important. And so people naturally associate these other types of photos situations as boudoir because they know there's a woman in a bra in the photo, you know, and I get that. On the photographer's part and for the simplicity of a client, this misclassification really isn't doing anybody any harm. You know, as a bit of a purist myself and for anybody who studies boudoir photography and, and selling it as a surface, hopefully they'll be aware of these differences and this and this distinction. And the bottom line here is in the end, we are all working to create the best art that we can. And our number one goal is to ensure our clients are having a wonderful time during their sessions. Whether you refer to it as glamour photography or outdoor boudoir, the goal remains the same. For the photographers listening to this, I hope this can clarify some details on the subject and you can use this information to grow, improve, and understand the engaging world of boudoir photography a little bit better. Happy shooting.